What's up, everybody? God bless you. Um, my name is Prophet Jordan Bryce, and this is my first um, of many attempts um, to come on here and do YouTube Lives and to discuss with you um, everything as it relates to Christianity, the kingdom, supernatural, um, all that good jazz. So um, I want to encourage you all, share this with somebody, share this to your Instagram. You know, you can share links on Instagram now. And I'm going to do my best to uh, teach tonight. And I want you to get on here and uh, and let me know who you are, your name, what city, state, or nation you are tuning in from. And um, if I get a decent amount of people watching me tonight, then I will do this more often and I'll do more supernatural Q&As um, and I'll do... Um, uh, Awesome, Aaron. Um, when when I'll do more of these, if I can get to a certain amount of number tonight. So I encourage you to share this with somebody that you know that's called apostleship or who is curious apostleship or curious what their apostles are for today or somebody who just wants to learn or somebody who follows me. Let everyone know that Prophet Jordan is live right now. And we're going to do this. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Come on, I see Angelo Virginia. It's not it's not telling me people's names on some source. I'm gonna have to go to my YouTube account and look at the video from there, um, and so I can see. There we go. Names on some source. Uh oh. To my. Yes, yeah, it's saying my archives. That is so weird. Glory. It's not saying who people are, but oh well. Well, Angelo Virginia. Uh, was saying my archives. That is so interesting to me. But regardless, um, oh, that might be your, your actual name, my archives, but God bless you. Um, Fort Worth, Texas, how are you? I'm going to go ahead and share this right now, the link to this to my Instagram and to my community um, to let them know that I am live. Uh, so you guys get to see me text everybody, and then I'm going to teach them that. For those who are watching the replay, you might want to fast forward to about four minutes, and um, you will be able to, hello, Terrence, out in Arkansas, and then you'll be able to uh, uh, watch the video play. But I'm sending this link. Um, let's see. Here we go. Every man, amen. I'm sending to my uh, community, so I'm gonna send that to that, and then I'm going to go ahead and put it on my Instagram. Yep, just sent through Instagram, and I'm gonna put it on my Instagram. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's do this. I'm gonna take a picture of it all. This is really bad, guys. I should have did this beforehand, but oh well. You guys are gonna have to be okay. So. Yay, cheese. And then uh, and then I'm going to put a link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, oops, do it again. I'll do it again. Uh, I'm going to put a link. I told you, well, four. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there, guys. Almost there. Customized sticker. Uh, Yay. Yay. We're posting it. Cool. So we're we'll get on here. I see some people have joined in. God bless you. Um, let me know where you're coming in from. I see Ter I see Terrence from Arkansas. I see my archives. Uh, that's what my YouTube is under brother. Amen. I see Janita, um, from Louisiana. God bless you. I see, uh, uh, Serenity from Fort Worth, Texas. I see, uh, Angelo, um, uh, Angelo, Virginia from my archives. So amen. Amen. I'm happy that you all are here. Um, I'm going to give you a few announcements. Um, first announcement is that I have architect gathering coming up. Architect 2022. Uh, listen, Dr. Cindy Trim is going to be preaching. My spiritual father, Apostle Ryan Lestrange, kind of gives you a hint that I believe in apostles for today. Um, uh, also, uh, Apostle Charlie Howell, uh, uh, Cynthia Thompson, uh, Michael Good is leading worship. Matt Gilman is leading worship. Joanne Rosario is leading worship. So many powerful people. Jason Lee Jones is, is ministering. So um, I encourage you, if you would like to come to Architect, you can go to architect2022.eventbrite.com. That's architect 
2022.eventbrite.com and you can sign up for that and it's going to bless you uh, tremendously. Also, uh, tomorrow, I don't have a, a thing to put on there, but tomorrow I'm having a virtual healing service live on YouTube um, with uh, my musicians, my band, um, singers. It's going to be absolutely bananas. So I encourage you not to miss that uh, gathering. It's going to be on my Facebook on JBC Ministries and on my YouTube um, at Prophet Jordan Bryce. Kombucha juice. So that also, you can text me and text my ministry to stay updated at 571-901-1803. And um, that's good. And um, I think that's all that I want to talk about right now. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get into this. The main question, what I'm going to be teaching tonight is our apostles for today. Now, I don't see much comments coming in, but I encourage you guys, comment, share, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, okay? A lot of content, a lot of stuff. I'm revamping everything, and it's going to be amazing. So you don't want to miss that. Also, I have YouTube memberships now. And so within my YouTube memberships, you can join my School of Prophets. If you are a prophet or called to be a prophet, or you want to go way deeper in the prophetic, um, I want to encourage you to join that membership. Um, if you go to my go to next to that button, it says subscribe on my channel page and click join. You can join there. Also, I have Supernatural Mentees that I am mentoring through the YouTube channel. Um, you can go and join that membership as well. And also I have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, session thing with YouTube that you can join. So I encourage you to jump on that as well. All right. So the main thing, our apostles for today, in layman's terms, in simple terms, and I'm going to make sure people are, com are not commenting on the channel and it's not showing up on my thing. Wow. So people are commenting on here, but it's not showing up in my chats. So uh, Satan is a liar. Um, I see Marquan on here. Love you, Marquan. I see Michigan. Um, I see all these great people. Um, and so, uh, yes, there is a fee uh, for the membership. Yes, there are fees for the membership. Um, preachers got to eat, don't they? Uh, so, yes. Uh, so um, let's do this. Why am I making this video? First and foremost, uh, why am I making this video? Because... Um, I did a testimony recently on Dela Fe. And uh, for those who don't know, I was actually the very first testimony that ever happened on Dela Fe. Um, it was, uh, I see, there are 28 people watching me according to, uh, according to my app. Uh, but um, according, uh, oops, I don't know what's happening right now. I don't know what's happening on my YouTube right now. Um let me go to my YouTube because on the YouTube app, it says 28, 29 people, but um, on here, it says only 11 people are watching me right now. It says 30 people now. Okay. So YouTube was acting crazy. Anyways, um, I don't see much comments after that. So we'll see what happens. Um, yeah. So I did a, a testimony on Dela Fe. I was the very first, um, very first testimony that ever happened on Dela Fe. Um, I did a testimony about my first encounter with Jesus, my testimony as I got saved. And I did another testimony recently um, where I uh, talked about uh, my encounter of becoming a deliverance minister. Now, the thing that, um, that, um, uh, yes, we don't live by bread alone, um, it, but we also do live by bread. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> I'm not that kind. Um, so um, one of the things I found very interesting that whenever I tell my testimony, my grandmother, who is an apostle, um, um, is brought up, obviously, because she's a huge part of my testimony. And when I would go to the comments on both of my testimony videos, I would see... Um, I would see all of these comments about people who says we don't believe in woman apostles and we don't believe that apostles can exist today. And so now anybody can call themselves an apostle and yada, 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 yada. And I love my favorite comment that I have ever gotten um, or I've ever seen on the Dela Fe testimonies is that there were only 12 apostles. And I was explaining this last night to some people. I said, "Here's the thing. Um, I could put um, I could put a, a a twelve year old in front of the Bible and make them read the entire New Testament, 
and they would be able to tell me that there were more than 12 apostles in the Bible. Honestly, all you got to do is read the book of Acts and you will find that there were more than 12 apostles mentioned in the Bible. So I'm going to really teach and clarify tonight about some of these things, but that's my why, why I'm doing this video. I'm doing this video because I want people to know and I want people to understand that um, apostles exist today. So if you're wondering if I think or if I know apostles exist today, scripturally, uh, theologically, revelatorily wise, I 100% believe in apostles. And not only do I believe in apostles, I believe in woman apostles. And I'm going to show you why tonight. And so while you're doing, um, I want you to go ahead and I want you to uh, Mina, I love you. I want you to go ahead and share this with somebody. Um, I want you to share this with somebody. Um, so let's deal with this. Firstly, I want to talk about it. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. A very, very uh, a pivotal scripture as it relates. And I don't have a lot of time because I need to get out of here and go to bed. But um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, it reads this. It says, built on the foundation, speaking of the church, of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. So one of the things we have to understand, that there is no building of the church without the presence of apostles and prophets. Understand what I'm saying? So one of the jobs of apostles and prophets is that they are builders. Hello, everyone. Shannon, uh, um. I'm going to deal with the role of apostles in a moment. So, but first, we understand from a biblical perspective that apostles, one of their objectives, one of their assignments, one of their roles is to be the foundation of the church. Now, one of the things that I want to tell you, because in America, we have everything twisted because we have given the show to pastors to run the church of Jesus Christ. Now, many of you say that there are no apostles for today, but I would ask you this follow up question. Where in the Bible does it say that pastors started churches? Okay. I'm going to ask you again. Where in the Bible does it say that pastors start and govern churches? Nowhere. So a lot of us are biblically illiterate and we just take people's word for it. Oh, pastors are in charge of the church? Okay, though I, I, I read the Bible, I study it, I see it nowhere in scripture, but you have just been a zombie of religion just hearing what people have taught you, but you've not sought the scriptures for yourself to really find out, hmm, are pastors really supposed to be running the show here? I'm fussing already. But to those who tell me that no apostles were today, where's that in scripture? I'm going to ask you, where have you seen a pastor start a church in the Bible? It's not there. It's not there. Now, am I saying that the churches that are started by apostles, are they are Ill illegitimate? No, I'm not. What I'm saying is we have an order issue as it relates to church leadership in America. And we've been brainwashed by religion as it relates to who is supposed to be running the church and who is supposed to be at the forefront of the church. And that's why the church in America is stagnant, because we have pastors occupying the position of apostles. Okay. So, hi Mary, love you. So let's 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 deal with this, okay? So the Bible tells us that God set first in the church apostles, secondarily prophets. As Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse I'm uh, sorry, First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse uh, twenty eight. The Bible says that God has set firstly in the church apostles, then secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. So if real governance, the real biblical governance of the church is going to be done the way the Bible tells us to do it, that means that the first ranking officers in the church of Jesus Christ are supposed to be apostles. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's supposed to be apostles. Secondarily prophets. I'm not going to get into that because we have rele we have relegated prophets to only prophesying and being itinerant ministers and coming to make us all feel good when the church gets discouraged. But there is more to the to the job description in the role of a of prophets than just prophesying. We can look at the book of Acts for that. The Bible tells that Silas and Judas, not Iscariot, but Judas was a prophet and a leader amongst the elders and the apostles in the church. And that when there was a doctrinal issue in Antioch, Judas and Silas went down with the apostles 
who were prophets to come help correct and enforce an, an, a doctrinal issue. So there is more to prophets than just prophesying. But we just listen to our favorite prophets talk about prophecy and prophesy, and we think that's all that prophets do, but we don't read our Bible. We don't read our Bible. We watch YouTube videos, but we don't read our Bible. I'm fussing, and you're going to get off of here soon. Don't worry, I'm, I'm going to get to the good stuff. So let's deal with this more. If you're being blessed, go ahead and comment. Um, like I said, if I can get to a certain amount of people watching me at one time tonight, I will do this more often, okay? Yes, someone asked, Jen B said, could some pastors actually be apostles without understanding the fivefold? My answer to you is 100% yes. Very good observation. Very good question. Why do I, why, why do I agree with you to, the, to that extent? Because a lot of times people are really apostles. They've had an encounter with the Lord or some sort to verify that they're called to apostleship. But because the church is not accepting of apostles, they won't say anything. So they masquerade or mask themselves as pastors while doing apostolic work. But if we're really going to operate at the full capacity as the church of Jesus Christ, we as American Christians, we as American Christians need to fully embrace the office and the grace of the apostle. OK, now, listen, a lot of people will talk about how um, people have done this um, wrong for years. People are false apostles. They're tyrants. Uh, they, they're self-proclaimed apostles. They make themselves into apostles. Do I agree that there are people out here who are doing that stuff? Yes. But if listen, the Bible warns us of false apostles. But if the Bible has to warn us of some being false apostles, don't you think that there's a real thing out there somewhere? Don't you think that there's a real thing out there somewhere? So we have to really uh, look look at this from a logical understand. Reading is fundamental. Hook, use your phonics. Use your noodle. That you, use your reading comprehension. That there are real apostles out there. Okay, let's deal with that. I'm going to go further to prove my point. Now, I'm going to deal with all of the biblical requirements and attributes of apostles. Okay, I have scripture for days. Firstly, let's look at Second uh, Corinthians twelve and twelve. This is what Paul does when he's defending his apostleship. He says, the signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. In other words, Paul is defending his apostleship and he's defending his apostleship against these uh, so-called super apostles, right? And if you read the scripture, you will see the context of what I'm talking about here. Um, but he's defending his apostleship against these super apostles. And he says, listen, I did everything that a true apostle is supposed to do. So we can learn something from Paul. Paul said the true signs of an apostle are performed with patience, with signs, wonders, and mighty works or miracles. Now, Let's deal with these three things because these three understanding these three things. I'm, I'm about a few more people uh, from 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 saying I'm going to do this every every uh, uh, um, every week and doing this more often. So I see 47 people. If I get three more people on here at a time, I will I will I will commit myself totally to YouTube. Um, but um, Paul says that first there are there are signs, wonders, and miracles. So in other words, we talk about miracles, signs, and wonders. Um, so uh, understand that there are uh, certain things that we have to understand about these words because they all mean something different. We sing about them all the time, but we don't. Oh, I'm at 49. Um, we sing about them all the time, but oftentimes we don't know what they mean. What is a sign? A sign is something that happens you know, in, in the Greek. What it means is um, something that happens in the heavens and happens in the earth. A sign can happen in the sky. The Bible says that there'll be great signs, uh, the sun turning to, uh, I'm sorry, the moon turning to blood and, and all these various different signs that will take place in the Bible. So understand uh, a sign is something that can take place or happen within nature. I've, I've hit 52. You know what that means, saints. Um, so in other words, I'm going to commit myself to YouTube. God bless you all. So, uh, uh, um, so in other words, what is a sign? A sign looks like something happening in nature to confirm uh, 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 that this person is sin of God. It's whenever nature or creation deviates from its natural course. You see what I said? It's whenever nature or creation deviates from its natural 
course. Some of the signs of, of, of Jesus is, understand, Jesus is and was an apostle according to the book of Hebrews. The Bible says through the Hebraic writer, he says, consider him the bishop of our souls and the apostle of our profession. So the chief apostle, the first apostle that ever was, is Jesus the Christ. Because what does the word apostle mean? The word apostle simply means uh, sent one. It is the Greek word apostolos. And it simply means a sent one. So whenever I'm dealing with an apostle, I'm dealing with someone who's sent of God. Now, listen, there can be people who are sent of God who are not apostles. But understand, even, even... The word sent in the Greek is the word apostello, which derives from the word apostolos, which is apostle. So to be sent is apostolic in its nature. So in other words, whenever I deal with apostle, that means that there is somebody who is sent of God. That's why Jesus is an apostle. Jesus is an apostle of the Father because the Bible shows us that the Father sent Jesus into the earth. To accomplish the, 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 the building and the advancing of his kingdom. Understand, the word apostle is a Greco-Roman military term. It's an officer that is intended by the Roman government to recover the spoils of war. <clears throat> the war that we are in or have been in was won in Calvary. Jesus died on the cross and he won the spoils of war. So the spoils of war are us, the kingdoms of this world, Bible says, and the kingdoms of this world have become the kings of our Lord and his Christ, right? So the war has already been won once Jesus died and resurrected. So now apostles have to be loose to recover the spoils of war. And have all the, the spoils of war been recovered? No, because there are people who are not saved. There are systems that have not bound their knee to Jesus. Therefore, we still need apostles. Until the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, we need apostles. And just because, once again, you saw it done it wrong, someone do it wrong, does not mean it can't be done right. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Let me get back to my scripture. Um, the next thing, so, so signs. Next point, wonders. Now, I'm going to offend all you um, flimsy deliverance people because um, I have found, listen, listen, I know my testimony has seemed nice and I'm really, really nice, but I'm letting you know I am blunt, I am real, and I have no problem offending you. So to all you flimsy deliverance people who can't take a rebuke and go from church to church, check this out. And, and, and all about this hyper super grace and God just loves us. He would never let any of us get hurt. This next point, the next point is wonders. Now it's in your Bible. We talk about we, God, you're the God of wonders, miracles, signs, and wonders. God, uh, um, uh, God show us wonders. Now you hear what I'm saying? The Greek word for wonder is the word omen. The Greek word for wonder is omen. In other words, a warning or a curse. Bad news. You understand what I'm saying to you, right? Hey, Donna, love you. The Greek word for wonder is omen or a curse. I feel like a lot of times we read the Bible and we skip over the parts where God shows us that he's still a judge. You know, God has not changed since the Old Testament to the New Testament. We preach like this is like another God or something like that. Like Old Testament God is different from New Testament God. He's still God and he's still a judge. And he will judge whatever he needs to judge. Did you hear what I said? Um, an omen is a curse. Apostles have the ability to curse things. And pronounce the judgment of God on things. How do I know? Ask Ananias and Sapphira. What happened? The Bible says that, um, that, 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 that they lied to the Holy Ghost and Peter looked at them and said, look, the, the feet of the men that will carry you out. And they both dropped dead in separate occasions and they were carried out and, and buried. You understand 
that the Holy Spirit didn't tell Peter to, to release judgment. Peter, in his own apostolic authority and mind, said, you all need to be judged. And the penalty was death. Now, a lot of you flimsy Christians don't like someone having that much authority. And that's why you're immature, because you can't take the word for what it is, right? But a part of having an apostolic assignment, you have the ability to curse things. But you, but understand, they curse things that are in the way of the advancing of the kingdom of God. You understand what I'm saying to you? They curse things that are in the way of the advancement of the kingdom of God. So what am I saying to you by that? Paul, the apostle, he was dealing with a sorcerer. And the Bible says he got that, that Paul pronounced the man blind. And a mist came on his eyes and he had to be led away. An omen, a curse. Understand? Okay? So miracles, I'm sorry, signs, wonders, now miracles. What is miracles? Miracles is the Greek word dunamis, which simply mean explosive power. Simply mean explosive power. So that's the realm of miracles. That could be healing. That could be the slaying power of God. That could be any of those things, okay? So that is what the three requirements that Paul gives us in, in 2 Corinthians 12 and 12 about what, what apostles are supposed to do. If, if you Those of you just coming in know that I'm defending apostles for today because a lot of you don't believe in them and I'm going to talk about them, okay? All right. Now, I'm going to deal with the infilling power of the Holy Ghost, because this is one of the next things uh, that are resident in the apostles' ministry, is getting people filled with the Holy Spirit and the releasing of the presence of God onto people's lives, all right? I'm going to deal with this. Uh, let's deal with, uh, firstly, let's talk about the evangelist Philip. The Bible tells us in um, Acts that there was an evangelist. His name was Philip. He went to a particular city and revival essentially began to break out in that city. Read it in the book of Acts. Philip began to lay hands on people and he began to get healed. And with loud shrieks, the Bible tells us that demons begin to come out of people in the book of Acts. Now, the Bible tells us that, 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 they, that, that the apostles heard of what was happening in the city that Philip was in. And so the Bible tells us that the apostles went and um, um, they went and they went to that city and they uh, begin to lay hands on people because though Philip was moving in the power of God through healing and deliverance, nobody had received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the infilling of the Holy Spirit is an apostolic faculty. Okay? It's an apostolic faculty. What am I talking about? There's a special grace on apostles to get people filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why I know a lot of people that are in these movements right now that are doing deliverance and healing and revival, that they're not apostles, even though a lot of you are trying to make them apostles, they're really evangelists. And there's nothing wrong with that. We need evangelists. My God, I've been praying for years that God would raise up evangelists. I tried to be an evangelist one time. We're all supposed to do the work of an evangelist, but we need real evangelists. But we're confusing evangelists to be apostles when they're not. So, 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 so evangelist Philip, he's, he's, he's ministering, but no one had received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, listen, if you get someone filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm not calling you an apostle, but what I'm saying is that's an apostolic anointing that does that. I'm going to have to do part two, but that's an apostolic anointing. All right. All right. Peter and John got that, got them people filled with the Holy Ghost to the extent that Whoever John and Peter put their hands on, there was some kind of outward sign that the Holy Ghost was following them. I don't know if they were being slain in the Holy Ghost. I don't know if they were shaking. I don't know if they were laughing. But the Bible basically indicates to us that there was some kind of outward expression upon the people that they were receiving the Holy Spirit when John and Peter were putting their hands on people. Okay? So when you receive the Holy Ghost, there's going to be some kind of manifestation. And apostles a lot of times will bring that. One of the clear signs of an apostle is that they have a ministry of getting people filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? And introducing people to different realms of the Spirit of God, okay? Um, Paul the Apostle, he came into contact with uh, some of, two of John the Baptist's disciples, and he asked a famous question we, we, we always talk about in the Apostolic Pentecostal Church. He said, have you received since you believed? 
And they said, we didn't know there was a spirit of God to receive because they were John's disciples. They were only baptized in John's baptism. The Bible says that Paul takes them, baptizes them in Jesus' name, and he lays his hands on them, and they begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. They were both filled with the Holy Ghost. It's a job of the apostles. Peter went into Cornelius' house just to preach the gospel, and before he could even lay hands on the boogers, they all begin to speak in tongues and prophesy. And these were Gentiles, the first Gentiles to receive the Holy Ghost. And they didn't even need hands laid on them. But there was something on Peter, the apostolic anointing, that opened the realm of the Spirit to cause people to have spontaneous baptisms in the Holy Ghost. It's in the apostles' and gift set, okay? All right. I'll deal with my next subject. I'm going to try to move quickly. Uh, now, I'm going to name some apostles in the Bible, and I want to challenge you all to go look up these apostles, go look up these apostles in the scripture, which is going to prove one of my final points for tonight, okay? This is going to prove one of my final points for tonight. Um, one of my final points is there were more than 12 apostles in the Bible, okay? Once again, there were more than 12 apostles um, in the Bible, and I'm going to deal with that. Let's deal with this. I'm going to do it from scripturally, okay? 1 Thessalonians 2 and 6. Nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others, though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ. Now, a lot of people understand that 1 Thessalonians is authored by Paul, but people don't understand that 1 Thessalonians was not just authored by the apostle Paul. It was authored by Timothy and by Silas or Silvanus. Understand, Silvanus was the longer name of Silas. Silas was a nickname of, Sil of Silvanus, which is going to bring me to another point in a moment. But the Bible tells us that in 1 Thessalonians, Paul says to these Thessalonians, along with Timothy and along with Silvanus, um, they say, we could have re required more of you, us being apostles of Christ. We could have asked you to do more. We could have done way more um, being apostles of Christ. Um, in other words, Paul was not just referring to himself as an apostle. He was referring to Timothy as an apostle, and he was referring to Silvanus as an apostle, which shows me that a man also can be more than one office at a time. You see what I said? Now, Timothy, people try to teach that Timothy was a pastor. Show me him in the scripture. Firstly, pastors don't oversee cities. Timothy was given charge over Ephesus. That's an apostolic duty. I said duty. <laughs> I'm a little immature sometimes. That's an apostolic duty. Timothy was given charge over the Ephesus church by Paul. Overseeing a city is apostolic in its nature. You understand what I'm saying? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something. People have lied. That, that scripture. Why do I say that? And people talk about how in Timothy, Paul gives some requirements for elders and pastors. Why? Because Timothy had to, if you read it carefully, Paul was teaching Timothy how to be an apostle and set elders in place. Apostles set elders in place. Apostles set pastors in place. Y'all been lied to. Someone lied to y'all. I'm not going to say that word on, on YouTube yet. I have to make sure you all love me before I say what I wanted to say. And because this is a new audience for me. Instagram, I can say what I want. Facebook, I can say whatever I want. But I got to wait for you all to love me. Once I know you love me, then I will talk real, real to y'all. <laughs> I just don't need this going viral right now. <laughs> so understand that Paul was teaching Timothy how to be an apostle. You hear what I said? Now, uh, <laughs> but so so after that, let's do with the next the next thing. All right. So also, the Bible tells us in the book we've been bamboozled. <laughs> the Bible tells us in the book of Acts that Silas or Silvanus was a prophet. So in Acts, he was a prophet. 
But in 1 Thessalonians, he's mentioned as an apostle. In other words, he was a hybrid. He was both an apostle and prophet. The Bible says that we teachers receive a stricter judgment. The Bible says that in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers that were ministering before the Lord with prayer and fasting. So we can conclude through our, through our noodle and teaching that Paul was a teacher before he was an apostle. You don't just, listen, understand, unless you walked directly with Jesus, you don't just become an apostle. You got to serve in the house of God. The apostle is the highest office in the land. You don't just become one. You serve in the house of God. And ultimately, God puts you in that position. But why would God trust a novice at the highest office in the land? You wouldn't even trust a novice to make your food. If you went to a restaurant and found out that it was the chef's first day of cooking, you would leave. I know I would. That food finna be nasty. So, 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 so Paul, he started off as a teacher. Paul was a hybrid. Sylvanus, Sylvanus, he was a hybrid. Silas, oh, a hybrid. You hear what I'm saying? So, yeah. Acts 14, 14. But when the apostles... So we, we find out, we find out, so that there, so we have the 12, then we have Paul, who was not one of the 12, so that's 13. Then we have Sylvanus or Silas, that's 14. And we have Timothy, that's 15. Let's continue. Acts 14, 14. But when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd crying out. So they were worshiping them because of a miracle that they did. And all of a sudden, the Bible refers to Barnabas as one of these apostles. Would you look at that? Another apostle. So let's 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 use our numbers. Let's use our numbers, okay? Like, okay, so we have the 12. I'll answer that later, Miss Oliver. Um, glad you're here, Quinn, too. Uh, so let's let's count the apostles. So now we have the 12. We have Paul, 13. We have uh, Timothy, 14. We have Silas, 15. And now we have Barnabas, 16 apostles. Somebody can't count. Somebody can't count. Somebody, someone, someone is teaching theology and can't count. <laughs> okay. 16 doggone apostles. All right. All right. Galatians chapter 1, verse 19. But I saw none of the other apostles except James, the Lord's brother. Wait a dog on minute. I'm going to murder your bad theology tonight. Okay? Um, let's deal with this. So the Bible refers to James, the Lord's brother, the Lord's younger brother, because... Mary was a virgin. If you're the Lord's older brother, we got some questions. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I mean, Mary was no virgin when she had him. But, 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 but James, the Lord's brother, this is not the same James that was one of the 12. Bible refers to this James, the Lord's brother, as an apostle. But this was not one of the original 12 apostles. So what am I saying to you? I'm saying that James, the Lord's brother, was an apostle. Jesus' younger brother was an apostle. Would you look at that? I don't have time to get into all that. As a matter of fact, he was so apostolic that he was given charge of the apostolic council. Do you imagine that James, the Lord's brother, oversaw the other apostles in Jerusalem? That's how, that's how apostolic he was. Okay, let's continue on. I'm just giving you scriptural examples tonight. Oh, I'm just so blessed of the Lord tonight. All right. Acts 1, 25 to 26. To take the place in the ministry and apostleship from Judas, turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So people said that Paul was the 13th apostle. Actually, no. Matthias was the 13th apostle. Paul was most of the four, one of the 14th apostles, maybe. 
Maybe. I can't confirm that scripturally. So there goes another apostle. Matthias was named as an apostle. He had all the requirements and all that wonderful stuff. So, yeah, there's another apostle. Another apostle, Matthias, okay? So what is that, 17, 18 apostles now? 17, 18? Let's go to another scripture, okay? I have one more, and I'm going to make you all mad. I'm going to make you mad. Romans 16, 7. I look forward to your debunking videos of this. Greet Adronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles and they were in Christ before me. Prophet Jordan, they weren't mentioned as apostles. Mm, look at it in the Greek. Now, one of the things you have to understand, I'm going to deal with this. Most early translators of the Bible did not believe that women could be in ministry. Okay, through some of the misinterpretation of Paul's writings and, and various other things. And also was very egotistical in that day and stuff like that. I can scripturally prove that women are called to preach. But so if you actually look in the King James Version of the Bible, you will find that Junia's name, Junia, Junia is Junius. But if you would re do your research, you will find out that Junius was on a popular name in that time until about 200 years later, 150 to 200 years later, which proves that this Junius was really Junia. Was Junia. We don't, Adronicus was a male. Junia was a, was a female. The Bible says they were highly regarded among the apostles. If you look in the Greek, it actually names them among the apostles. So in other words, Adronicus and Junia were both apostles. Paul mentioned a woman as one of the apostles. That's powerful to me. Let me set all you women free. Be free from bad theology in Jesus' name. Okay? Now, so now I've named 17 to 18 to 19 apostles um, my question to you firstly is, uh, I don't, I, I don't want to deal with Mary Magdalene. It's a little too murky for me. Um, I have personal opinions, but I am very careful not to teach publicly my personal opinions and I, things that I cannot prove scripturally. Okay. So, um, but anyways, I do believe women apostles. Okay. Um, so now my question to you is if there are more than 12 apostles, I just named all these extra apostles. In the scripture, my question to you is, when did God, if, if there are no more apostles, when did God stop making them? That's my question. One, he never stopped. Go back to the original part of this teaching. He never stopped making apostles. He never did. Secondly, if apostles don't exist today, that means prophets don't exist. That means evangelists don't exist. That means teachers don't exist. And that means pastors don't exist. Because the thing is, in Ephesians 4 and 11, the Bible says, Ephesians 4, 9, 10, 11, and 12, it's about he who ascended first had to descend into the lower parts of the earth, and he led captivity captive, and he gave gifts unto men. And he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So, Satan has stifled the church by making us the threefold ministry church when really we're the fivefold ministry church. All five. You cannot have one of them without the other. You can't. You can't scripturally tell me by that line of thought that's saying that apostles and prophets are not for today or that apostles are not for today, then there are no prophets. Exactly. How can the church continue to exist and grow? We've excluded two of the main offices in the house of God. And that's why the American church looks the way it does today. My question to you once again, after 17 to 18 apostles that I've named with proven, when did God stop making them? When? Don't tell me when scripture stopped being, being written. Because you can't prove that.
When did God stop making apostles? He didn't. So our apostles for today, they absolutely are. I've given you some terminologies, some knowledge. Um, so I hope you're blessed by that. I hope this little teaching blessed you. I got to get ready to go. Um, but also I want you to sign up for Architect Gathering, architect2022.eventbrite.com. Listen, it's going to be my, it's an apostolic prophetic conference. Your life is going to be changed forever. Buy a plane ticket, buy a ticket. If you cannot absolutely get here to Tyson's Corner, Virginia, outside, right outside the DC area, you need to go get a virtual ticket. Your life will never be the same. And I promise you that. Also, everyone who registers both in person and virtually, um, you um, um, just join my YouTube memberships, Ricky Smith. Um, um, and you'll see the schools there. But um, it's in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, or the D.C. area, Dulles Airport, Washington Airport, Dallas Washington Airport, IAD, or DCA. Those two airports are the coast airports to us. Um, it's, it's, a major, major, it's a major region. It's a major region. People fly to this region all the time. So um, the, the, it's the first weekend of November, November 3rd to the 5th. November 3rd to the 5th. I'm preaching. Um, um, my apostles preaching. Apostle Ryan. Dr. Cindy Trim is preaching. Uh, 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 Apostle Cynthia Thompson. Apostle Charlie Howell. Uh, uh, Apostle Jason Lee Jones. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Sign up at architect2022.eventbrite.com, okay? Uh, don't miss out on that gathering. Also, listen, this was all free content for you tonight, but if you would like to sow into me or, or sow into this teaching, if you are blessed by it and you want to give something, if you're believing God for supernatural harvest or increase in your life, I want to challenge you to sow a seed into cash sign JBC ministries. Okay. I'm going to do this a lot more often. I'm going to do uh, teachings, all kind of wonderful things. I am so shocked and surprised by all the people. I think we popped up. We, we, the highest we got was 68 people tonight and that's close to 70. That's way over my goal. And so the fact that YouTube is hungry, I will jump on here way more often and I will release teaching, um, for you also. Like you, like I said, if you like to sew, um, Hey, no problem, Quinn. God bless you. Um, so, and don't forget, tomorrow night, I have a virtual healing service. 7 o'clock p.m., join in for worship, get healed. I'm going to be imparting into people to get the healing through the screen. It's going to be mind-blowing. You don't want to miss it. Join me tomorrow night on here at 7 o'clock p.m. with my band, my singers, everything from Nova Hub Church. And I'm going to be teaching about the healing ministry, and I'm going to be working miracles through the screen. It's going to be crazy. It's our monthly healing service and you don't want to miss it. Okay. So I love you. Um, it's going to be great. And if you like to sew, sew there. Uh, also, uh, is that everything? Oh, text me. 571-901-1803. 571-901-1803. Okay. I love you. Have a good night. Peace.